The Shibboleth was an installation created by Doris Seseldo, created in 2007 to 2008, and located in the Tate Modern Museum in London. Doris Seseldo is a Colombian-born visual artist and sculptor. Her work is influenced by her experiences of life in Colombia and is generally composed of commonplace items such as wooden furniture, clothing, concrete, grass, and rose petals. Seseldo's work give, gives form to pain, trauma, and loss, while creating space for individual and collective mourning. These themes stem from her own personal history. Members of her own family were among the many people who have disappeared in politically troubled Colombia. Much of her work deals with the fact that while the death of a loved one can be mourned, their disappearance leaves an unbearable emptiness. Salcedo lives and works in Bogota, Colombia. In context of this work, the name Shibboleth was chosen because it means a word a foreigner or a person unfamiliar with a language may mispronounce. This means that it was named after the struggle that foreigners have when traveling to places that don't speak their language and are forced to butcher words. This goes back to the immigrant experience in Europe that has been going on for some time now, especially in the recent years. This work is very valuable to today's circumstances in Europe because back in 2015, over 1 million people sought refuge in Europe. This became an issue when African American and Muslim immigrants that were in need of protection were framed as illegal migrants. The shibboleth eventually turned into an erasable scar that would forever commemorate the lives who were affected by the racism in Europe. As for the form of this work, it is very simple. It's generally just a crack in the ground that falls between the categories of installation and sculpture. The crack as it goes down the hall gets thicker in width and eventually splits into two separate cracks. This work was made by opening the floor that was already in the hall and inserting Colombian rock faces with wire mesh to detail the work as well as hold it in place as utilitarian function. The work itself is 548 feet inches in length and the width of the crack ranges from one inch and two feet wide. Any questions? It's literally just a crack in the ground. It seems so pointless. So why was it made? Well, thank you for the perfect segue into the function of this work. Shibboleth was made to remind us of the immigrant experience in Europe so it may never be forgotten and so the people that experience this racism may be commemorated. The work also represents the possibility of healing and being better in the hope of Doris Sassetto to stop the harsh treatment of immigrants as a whole. Moving away from the European immigrant experience side of this work, the shibboleth is up for interpretation due to new research about it through photographs. More and more photographs are being taken of this work and a common sight is seeing someone get down closer to the shibboleth and trying to see the work from a different perspective. As you can see from this clip, people are crouching, tilting their heads, standing all around it, and laying down to see the installation from all kinds of angles and perspectives. Clearly, as stated before, it is a crack in the floor very similar to something you would see on a street road or concrete sidewalk, just on a much larger scale. The crack is made to look very natural, as if it formed on its own and is being preserved, though it is not natural and entirely installed. The work forces you to change your own perspective physically by moving your eyes to different positions while still focusing on the crack in order to see the work differently. This movement resembles us stepping into someone else's shoes to see things their way, relating us back to the European immigrant experience topic. While changing positions on looking at the crack, you may find yourself looking directly down into the dark abyss at the bottom of the crack. This will give you the feeling of chaos and catastrophe, relating the catastrophe that is the immigrant experience in foreign places. Though looking at the outside of this work from another angle, it looks more subtle. 
Doris wanted a work that looked peaceful and subtle, like an immigrant that makes their way to somewhere they can stay. She wanted this a piece that refers to the dangers at crossing borders or to being rejected in the moment of crossing borders. So I am making a piece about people who had been exposed to extreme experience of racial hatred and subjected to inhuman conditions in the first world. This, this piece is trying to introduce into the Turbine Hall another perspective. And the idea is that we all look down and maybe try to encounter the experience of these people that I've been referring to somewhere hidden within this deep uh, division that is being generated in the Turbine Hall. The presence of the immigrant is always unwelcome. The presence of the immigrant is seen as, uh, as uh, jeopardizing the culture of Europe. Uh, Europe is being seen as a homogenous society, a democratic society uh, that has learned through centuries of development, has learned to resolve the uh, issues through dialogue. And if that is the case, then where do we place these uh, outbreaks of racial hatred? So I Very similar to the shibboleth, 100, I mean, 1,550 chairs stacked between two buildings. This work is very similar to the shibboleth for it speaks upon another event worth remembering known as the 1985 siege. The building where the chairs are stacked held an event in which 300 people were held hostage, eventually ending in a brutal and bloody confrontation between military and rebels. This work also fits in very well with how she perceived art. All art to her, from abstract to renaissance, was political. Related works. The Spiral Jetty and the Serpent Mound are related to this work because they are both installations and they cannot be moved from their location. This is Trade, Gifts for Trading Land with White People. It was made by Jean Quick de C. Smith in 1992 using oil paint and mixed media, collage, objects, and canvas. It is a very large work with dimensions of 152.4 inches by 431.8 inches. Trade is currently located in the Chrysler Museum of Art in Norfolk, Virginia. Smith was born and raised on the reservation of the Flathead Nation in 1940 as one of 11 siblings. Her father was a horse trader and a rodeo rider. Her name, Quick to See, was given to her by her grandmother after she showed her ability to quickly grasp concepts. She took photographs of herself and was interested in being an artist throughout her childhood. She got a bachelor's in arts education in 1967 from Framingham State College. She was always being told that as a woman, she could never succeed in art, so she chose education instead. However, later on, which she showcased her first art, she quickly became famous and found that she could live off her art. In 1980, she received a master's in fine arts from the University of New Mexico. Smith continued to teach and spread art, especially that of other Native American artists, curating over 30 exhibitions promoting these artists. In her career, she has been honored with many awards, including the I. Tell George Fellowship in 2007, a grant from the Joan Mitchell Foundation to create a comprehensive archive of her work, a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Women's Caucus for the Arts, the College Arts Association Committee on Women in the Arts Award, the 2005 New Mexico Governor's Award for Excellence in the Arts, and four honorary doctorate degrees. She is heavily inspired by Robert Rauschenberg and Kurt Switchers. Down here, you can see Buffalo 2 by Robert Rauschenberg, and Open by Customs by Kurt Switchers. You can see that they both use collage and layering techniques, and Rauschenberg also uses blocks of dripping paint over his images. Here is a quick video where Smith talks about her life growing up and some difficulties she faced. It was in, it was 1940. Um, life was very, very difficult for Indian people at that time. So early on, I learned responsibility, um, that I had to grow up uh, fairly quickly. 
and learn how to survive. Growing up with my father and the racism that he faced as a child, we were told to leave. We don't serve Indians here, please leave. My father's influence and my tribe's influence on my worldviews about sustainability play a very important role in my work. It was in so what's going on in this work? What are all these images of and what's hanging above the canvas? Well, trade consists of various layered images, paints, and objects. The work is covered in collage with newspaper articles about native life, photos of deer, buffalo, native men, and also comics, tobacco and gum wrappers, fruit carton labels, ads, and pages from comic books. All of these items were specifically selected by Smith and generally feature stereotypical images of Native Americans. The final layer of paint is an outline of a canoe. Zoomed in here on the top right, you can see different layers of paint and newspaper, with this one featuring a Native American man. And here on the left, you can see prints of deer and buffalo. Specifically at the top portion of the work hangs the objects on a clothesline. These include Native-themed toys and souvenirs, especially from sports teams with Native American mascots. There are also toy tomahawks, a child's headdress, Red Man Chewing Tobacco, a Washington Redskins cap and license plate, and Florida State Seminoles bumper sticker. There's also a beaded belt, a toy quiver, an arrow, and a plastic Indian doll. When it comes to form, trade is similar to a medieval triptych because it consists of three panels. Each panel is very large and the canoe is almost life-size for comparison. You can see blocks of color, mostly vibrant reds, but also whites, yellows, and greens. The brushstrokes are very raw and prominent. <clears throat> this work is influenced by the abstract expressionist movement and features dripping paint. The overall composition is crowded and chaotic. You can see that the layers overlap and images are cluttered together in various locations around the canoe. Each aspect of this piece was chosen by Smith, and there's symbolism within everything. The red has multiple personal meanings to her, representing her own native heritage and the blood, war, anger, and sacrifice that her culture has experienced. The canoe is meant to symbolize the possibility of cultural connection and trade between Native Americans and white people. However, it's stuck and it can't move. The objects hanging on clotheslines above the work display how native life has been commercialized and turned into cheap objects that don't actually have any meaning behind them, like legitimate Native American objects would. While the various layers reference the complexity of our people and the history that should be behind all these stereotypical objects, but aren't. Trade has many functions, with the main one being to explore issues of Native American identity from multiple perspectives and to illustrate the ideas of the inequities of the colonial experience. Smith wanted to show another perspective of Manifest Destiny and Westward Expansion. She specifically made this work for the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's arrival in North America as a kind of non-celebration towards the event. She doesn't wish to celebrate since his arrival marked the beginning of a lot of suffering and change for Native Americans as they were pushed off their land and experienced discrimination. Some other works by Smith include In the Footsteps of My Ancestors, War Shirt, and State Names. All of these works are very similar and Smith's style is noticeable. In each one, she picks a main object to paint the outline of and layers images and paint underneath. For in The Footsteps of My Ancestors, she features a horse, and in War Shirt, she features a shirt. They all have dripping paint and an abstract expressionist kind of style. Improvisation 28, which was made by Vasily Kadinsky in 1912, and Migration of the Negro, panel number 49, from Jacob Lawrence in the early 20th century, are both very similar to trade. 
Improvisation 28 also features old black lines with colorful splotches of paint that appear almost splashed or dripped on. The composition of Improvisation 28 is also very crowded and chaotic, much like that of trades, and your eyes don't know where to focus since there is so much going on on the canvas. The migration of the Negro is similar in terms of function, since both trade and this work show the segregation of cultures and also the white influence on the migration of groups of people.